from Terry at D-Lab. Behind me, I've got a vintage receiver in need of repair. But first, we need to cover a subject. People are asking why I'm always drinking wine. Well, that's a funny question. Maybe I should drink a wine punch instead. Maybe not. I think the wine tastes better. Anyway, back to the receiver. This receiver suffers from a common problem. The dials are slipping as you're tuning them. So in this video, we're going to investigate why and hopefully fix it. So here we have a National 183 that suffers from dial slippage. Watch when I tune this dial. Watch it. See the slipping? I'm tuning the knob, but the dial does not engage properly. It's a real pain in the keister when you're trying to tune in a station. So let's see if we can determine why that's happening. All right, so I noticed that the problem is mainly with the band spread. However, the main tuning suffers from a little bit of it, but it actually tunes rather smoothly. Now watch this action on the tuning knob. See that? See that wobble? Let's look at the band spread. Much worse. So what I suspect is we have some bushings that are wore out. Here we are underside looking at that band spread control. See the slop? Let's look inside. You can see that same slop on the flywheel. I got this little fancy nut here Looks like the lube is pretty much gone, but there's no bushing here. There's only bushing in the front. So that's why this flywheel is allowed to flop around. By going down here to the main tuning knob, once again I have some slop, but not as bad. You can see how he looks. You can see that shaft back there moving around quite a bit. So once again, I believe the problem is between the front panel where these bushings are at. So if we remove the old knob aramis, here's a shaft coming through from the back side. And you can see the slop in that shaft, okay? So we're going to take a look and see what it, we need to do to remove this. But I got a bad feeling it's going to be complicated. Okay, well, I've determined the only way to really fix this is to remove the chassis from the cabinet. To get to these little pulleys underneath, I have to take out the two main plastic dials and then hopefully replace the bushings, which I've located. These are some old brass bushings I just happen to have in my collection and they look just like the ones that are in this radio. Next step is pull the chassis. All right, well, I'm not gonna bore you watching me take all the knobs and the hardware off and getting the chassis out, but I just wanted to stress one important fact is these dials behind here, they're very fragile. And if you uh, are aggressive with taking this apart and you happen to hit them, you're gonna crack them. And that's like my worst nightmare. So I'm gonna be very cautious taking this apart. All right, chassis removed. Next step, I'm going to take these two dials off. There's some set screws hidden behind here, but it doesn't look too bad to get them out. All right, the dials are removed, so now you can see right down the side and see those pulleys. So removing them shouldn't be too bad of a task. So removal, pretty much you take off this nut and on the back side, there's a quarter inch nut. I'll show you that. So here's the back side of the band spread pulley. And there's that nut I was telling you about. A little tricky to get in there. But you take him off, and then that pulley will drop out. So there's the pulley assembly removed. Okay. One thing I noticed though, when I was removing it, is you see this little hook? That little hook goes down here and supports the wire harness. So you gotta be really careful when you remove this. The other little surprise I got is 
yes, this is the right bushing that I have, but it appears as though they soldered this one in place. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. All right, so the pulley assembly came apart very easily. I took a couple nuts off the back side. The shaft came out, and bam, everything kind of fell out, all right? So here's the original bushing with the original shaft. I'm going to put that in there. Now look at the slop. You see that slop? So that bushing is war. Now here's my new bushing. It's much tighter. Much tighter. So I have to replace this thing and of course, yes, it's soldered in. But I really don't think it's a big deal. So I will unsolder this. We'll get the new bushing in place. And so I do have a slight dilemma. My new bushing is slightly longer than the old one by about maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I don't know if that's going to cause an interference problem because these little pinch pulleys sit behind this thing and that's what makes the dial spin. So I'm going to have to watch alignment. So I either will shim this back a little bit or when I put it in I'll mill it off to where it's the same height. To remove the old uh, bushing, since it's soldered on, I've got this Mambo Jambo Unger iron, okay? Goes up to about a thousand degrees. So I'm just going to put him in there, get that old solder to melt. I should be able to lift this bushing out of here if I'm lucky. There she comes. She's loose. Alright, the new bushing is in place. I'm going to tack solder this thing in here. Hopefully it stays centered. We'll check that. Don't want it to move out of place. It takes a lot of heat to get this thing to go back. There she goes. Alright, soldered in. And it looks perfectly centered. We should be good to go. Well, as usual, things always spiral out of control. The shaft requires approximately 50 thousandths of an inch of the shoulder to poke up past the bushing. Right now it's flush. So I'm going to mill off 50 thousandths of this bushing and hopefully everything works out. There she is, pretty much as good as new, no shaft slop, time to put it back in. All right, mission accomplished. The new bushings are installed. After a mere four hours of torture, I got them in there. The tuning feels like a million bucks. They're good and secure, there's no slop. I know the dials won't slip anymore. But, if you decide to do this yourself, word of caution, get the exact national bushings that were in there so that you don't have to modify and go through the hell that I did to make this work. If you decide to do this, you got it tore down, this is the time to give it a good cleaning, especially all the gear drives to those tuning caps, because I can feel this lube, it's like gum city, okay? So it's a great time to give her a good cleaning and lube and make this thing work like it should, especially if you've gotten to this point. Anyway, I hope it was good information for you, and if you decide to do it, good luck. See ya.